know, I've never met the person who actually wants to harm the environment when they travel. But yet, people and businesses do, and often because they don't see the long-term consequences of their actions. Like this woman with the turtle. I think good tourism development needs responsible tourism policies and planning to make it work. I've admired Costa Rica for years because of its visionary approach to tourism development. The government has set aside almost 25% of its land in protected areas. And there's a certification program for businesses to assess their green practices. Costa Rica was discovered in the 1980s by scientists and bird watchers who were attracted by the biotic diversity. Costa Rica is only slightly larger than Denmark and yet has over 5% of the planet's biotic diversity within its borders. Following the scientists and the bird lovers were the other nature travelers. And what we've seen is a dramatic growth in Costa Rican tourism. It's gone from about 300,000 in 1989 to over 2 million people last year. Tourism earns more foreign exchange than bananas, pineapples and coffee exports. However, Costa Rica now finds itself in an uncomfortable position. While over 60% of the people who came visited the national parks and went to see plants and animals, more of them, almost 80%, came for the beaches. And therein lies the rub. A country like Costa Rica, which built its brand on ecotourism and now seen an explosion in condominium developments and beach resorts. By the early 1990s, 80% of Costa Rican beachfront had been bought by foreigners. In 2009, only 105 out of 3,000 tourism businesses had been certified for green tourism practices, and most businesses said tourists didn't seem to notice or care. Some national parks have no infrastructure, and others are very overcrowded. Manuel Antonio National Park boasts small sized crowds each morning as travelers line up for a chance to see the natural environment. Fortunately, there's a limit of 800 people per day, but on the day that I was there, that felt like too many. But there are reasons to be optimistic. At Turkoli's River, tourists play Russian roulette with the traffic to come and see the crocodiles basking in the river. The truck drivers seem to be avoiding the pedestrians, but I can't say the same for the boat driver who I saw drive full speed over these crocodiles. You don't see the same approach with whale watching, but I don't think crocodile viewing has the same standards yet. From what I understand, these crocodiles used to be hunted. Now that they bring money into the community, they are protected, so that's progress. And there are many communities benefiting from protecting nature. In Tordeguero, almost everyone works in tourism. The last president of Costa Rica set a goal for the country to be carbon neutral by 2021, and they may succeed. Due to reforestation, there's been a 10% increase in the country's forests in the last decade. And over 90% of the country's energy comes from clean sources. There's even one of the domestic airlines using biofuel from cooking oil to fuel its ground vehicles. I wonder if the exhaust smells like french fries. So will Costa Rica find a way to manage its explosive growth? It had the policies and planning to develop the first phase of its growth successfully. Can they do it again?